in the next 10 minutes or so, um, I'm going to give you a, a few facts uh, to start with, uh, give you a few facts about the reality of the, uh, the high disease burden in Africa uh, and also the um, negative impact of that disease burden on the economic development uh, on the continent. Then I'll also give you some facts about Afro-pessimism, which is something that I think will become clear as I go through. And then I'll give you a sense of how we're responding uh, to addressing uh, those facts and challenges. So let me start with the, the facts. I think it's a no-brainer um, that Africa has a very high disease burden. Africa is often spoken about as the next frontier uh, in economic development. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the high disease burden um, really continues to choke economic development. Um, and of course, with devastating consequences, um, including very high unemployment amongst our youth, which of course is a future. Therefore, it's really vital for Africans to contribute to solving their health problems, which are not just African health problems. They are human health problems. Africans have benefited from the health innovation that's come from the North, from North America, from Europe. And therefore, it's also the time for Africans to step up and also make a contribution to providing innovation that benefits other people so that it's not just about a case of sharing benefits, but it's also sharing risks. And I think it's equally important for Africans to really think about using science for development. Africa does not need aid. Africa needs science. And I talk about science in terms of development, creating jobs and opportunities. And I hope that I'll be able to show you this from our limited experience of working in this area. That's a fact about Africa's um, very high disease burden and the impact on, on the economy. The second reality and the fact about Afro-pessimism, as it relates to health innovation, for example, the ability to discover medicines, is first of all, when you think about Africa, of course it depends on which part of the world you come from. But when it comes to health innovation, um, the first fact about Afro-pessimism, which by the way, is not just relevant to non-Africans, it's also just as relevant to Africans themselves. So often, and this is the first point about the pessimism aspect of it, is there is mysticism, sometimes quackery, that springs to people's minds when they think about African medicine. So African medicine is witchcraft, it's juju. And you know who is juju. <laughs> the second fact about this Afro-pessimism is that the perception out there is Africa is a place where you do clinical trials, because the patients are here, and because the disease is here. So there's nothing else you can do on this continent apart from clinical trials, because you're the subjects. And the third fact about Afro-pessimism is that Africa is not a source of health innovation. Africa cannot innovate for itself, but it doesn't have the infrastructure to be a leader in scientific research. That Africa is over-reliant on other people to develop innovations that then solve their problems. That's the reality of Afro-pessimism. So the question is, how do we respond to this? They say respect cannot be demanded. Respect must be earned. So how are we responding to the challenge of the high disease burden in Africa, and how we're we responding to confronting Afro-pessimism. To deal with the challenge of Africa's high disease burden, but also in the process trying to confront Afro-pessimism, in 2010, the University of Cape Town Drug Discovery and Development Center, also known as H3D, was established as the first of its kind on the continent, still remains to be the first and the only one of its kind on the continent. First of all, it was prompted by the recognition of the gap which exists between the laboratory and the patient. And so the goal of H3D is to bridge this gap, this chasm, between the basic sciences 
and the clinic to provide the translational aspects of medicine where we go from the laboratory to the patient, but also vice versa from the patient back to the laboratory. And in fact, the last four or five years in H3D, we've been acquiring pharmaceutical industry skills that you need to bring together multiple scientific disciplines that work together to discover a medicine and put it on the market, or at least put it in clinical development. So in five short years since it was established as the first of its kind on the continent, H3D has become the leading world-class drug discovery entity on our continent. It's going from strength to strength, and has had a number of multiple achievements, including the following that I'm going to summarize to you. The first one is really in a space of about five years, which in itself is a miracle. It's discovering two, not one, but two groundbreaking malaria drug breakthroughs, which I will describe as three to one drugs in the sense of, firstly, really showing the potential to be used as part of a single dose cure for all strains of the malaria parasite. But secondly, showing the potential to offer protection, including post-treatment prophylaxis or prevention of malaria. And finally, really showing the potential to block transmission of malaria. This represents the first time that this kind of innovation led by Africans out of Africa has led to groundbreaking discoveries of this nature, but as a consequence, has really put Africa on the global drug discovery map. And of course, this is not a small feat because it rarely happens that you see innovations from the lab ending up in patients in the clinic. The other aspect of this uh, progress we've made is actually creating drug discovery infrastructure which never existed before in South Africa or in Africa. Expertise and skills that never previously existed on this continent, but we've managed to develop. We've managed to develop a new pharmaceutical research and development industry, along with several staff scientist positions. In about 2010, 2011, we had five scientists. In a space of five years, we've grown to more than 50 scientists dedicated to doing drug discovery to find new medicines. That is enormous growth in a period of less than five years. We've managed to attract significant foreign direct investment, millions of dollars in research funding to prosecute projects in Cape Town. So really, really to summarize this and wrap up, that in H3D, we've been able at least to demonstrate that it's possible to debunk the myth that Africa is not or cannot be a source of health innovation. That we've been able to show that we can actually lead projects that lead to the discovery of medicine that alleviate human suffering. But also that we can use science for development, create jobs, infrastructure, opportunities, provide hope and inspiration to the next generation. And when I look back at the last five years, how did it happen? God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You don't need to be smart. You just need to be available. And when you are available, some people will trust in horses, others in chariots. But if you trust in him, the Heavenly Father, all things are possible. Thank you. <laughs>